What's cracking guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, in this vlog, we're gonna be bleeding the brakes on the hatchback. Uh, so I went to Arbor Freight and I got this cool little tool. So this is a pneumatic brake fluid bleeder with a bottle that you stick into the uh, master cylinder and it'll keep the brake fluid uh, at the top level so it doesn't um, drain out and you know you get more air, air bubbles or whatever. Um, so I have a compressor and uh bleeding brakes especially with like fresh lines and new pads and all that uh a pain in the butt so i'm hoping that this makes it fairly easy uh since i do have a compressor this should work the way that it should i read the reviews and they were pretty good uh so let's get started and uh let's get right into it all right so i got this all set up and i'm pretty excited to use this uh, my friend Isaac has one of these and he helped me bleed something one time and it was super fast uh, So I got the compressor hooked up And uh, yeah, this thing definitely does full vacuum uh, So now let's uh, let's get started on bleeding the brakes So my favorite part about this uh, Is this bottle here that I don't have to worry about having to keep topping off the uh, master cylinder um, so it's got this little valve here and it's shut, flip it over, put it in, and then, uh, you flip the valve and it'll start filling up the, the reservoir. So let's, let's get started. But yeah, so the valve is now down and it is filling up the reservoir. It's pretty cool. Um, hopefully it's enough brake fluid. I don't see why it wouldn't be enough. But yeah, just letting it do its thing. And then uh, we'll get started on, on bleeding the brakes. All right, so there, it stopped. Once it hit a certain point, it stopped. Uh, so now let's go. The way that you bleed brakes is you want to start from the uh, caliper furthest away from the, from the master cylinder. So we'll start with the passenger rear. Then we'll move on to the driver rear. And then we'll do the passenger front. And then we'll end with the driver front. So... Let's get started. So I've got everything connected. I uh, got this fitting onto the bleeder. Got my wrench on the bleeder. And uh, I can go ahead and turn this. And let's see if we can do it with one hand while filming. And then uh, let's squeeze this. Let's keep an eye on the hose. And there's the fluid. You can see all the bubbles. So I'm gonna need two hands for this because I know you're supposed to close it while it's still in vacuum. Uh, so let me go ahead and uh, do that and I'll keep you guys updated. So that seemed fairly easy. Uh, I pulled out all the fluid real quick. And then as soon as I didn't see any more bubbles in the stream, I went ahead and just uh, shut it off while holding vacuum and this is doing its job and still filling the reservoir so so far i'm pretty happy but we'll see uh once it's all said and done so i'm actually uh really happy i got that uh vacuum tool to bleed my brakes um but the brakes felt spongy and they've always felt kind of spongy so what i did is i ordered a uh a 91 Civic EX sedan master cylinder and it's a 15 16 uh, brake master cylinder um, and uh, one of my friends uh, Raul did that and his brakes felt much better so I ordered that and kind of sucks because I gotta bleed all the brakes again but um, it's cool because I'd rather have the pedal feel great um, but my current dilemma right now is um, I need a new battery and I know that but if I jump start the car it should still run off of the alternator um, but the problem is that it's not running off of the alternator um, I did a continuity test with all the grounds um, and I wasn't sure if the alternator ground itself uh, to the engine block um, because since the engine block is grounded um, so I did a continuity test from the housing of the alternator to the engine block and it does not ring out um, since I powder coated the bracket, um, it might be a possibility 
that that is why the alternator is not holding charge. Uh, so I need to remove the bracket and uh, I need to shave down some, some areas uh, that that way it can make contact um, and ground itself. Um, so I will show you guys what I'm talking about after I'm done. It's going to be real noisy so I'd rather just kind of do it. Uh, and it's real hot out and uh, I'm not really you know trying to sit out here forever. I just kind of want to uh, get it done with. So anyways, as always, I suck at filming, so uh, I'm just going to get to it. So I'll show you guys in a bit. So this right here is what I'm talking about. I had to sand down this piece here and this piece here because the bolt goes through and the bolt makes contact with the alternator. Um, and then I had to shave the rear of the bracket too since this makes contact with the engine block. So let me go ahead and install this and uh, let's hope that this is the problem. All right, so alternator and the bracket is installed. Uh, if you don't know how to do a continuity test, um, and if you don't know what that is, it's pretty much, uh, you get a digital multimeter, and uh, so you'll place a lead on one end of whatever you want to test, and the other end, you'll put it on the other end, and uh, it should beep or ring, and that should determine uh, if there is continuity, uh, meaning that there is no breaks or anything like that in the, uh, in the cable. Um, in this case, uh, we're testing continuity through the ground circuit. Um, so I have one of the leads on the ground terminal and uh, I have my other lead here and uh, you know you go to the ground transmission ground is good and then you can know you can test the ground throughout the entire engine uh, so the block in the engine is grounded um, so my problem was my alternator was not grounded so I shaved these pieces and the back of the alternator uh, because that uh, the alternator got powder coated. So now let's see if it rings out. And it does. So hopefully this solves the issue that I'm having. Um, so let me get my little jumper box and uh, try to fire the car up. Alternator screeching. Okay, so that is a good sound that the alternator is screeching. It wasn't screeching before. Um, so I can go ahead and shut this off here. Take these off. And now, uh, if you don't know, this is how you test if the alternator is running or not. You can remove the ground. Uh, they, you can remove the power terminal, and if the car stays running, then the alternator is working. So I'm crossing my fingers. Yeah, sweet. Oh, heck yeah, dude. All right. Whoa, sick. Let's go. Huge shout out to Manny, uh, Miklo82 on Instagram. Uh, and I know Charlie, uh, I don't know if you watched the vlog, but he had mentioned it too. Uh, but yeah, you guys were right. The powder coat definitely kept the uh, alternator from going. So, sick. So I ordered a new throttle body from Blocks Racing uh, because my current throttle body is having uh, like idling issues and stuff like that. So this is the Blocks Racing uh, Tuner Series throttle body, uh, which I'm hoping I have better luck with this than my current one. Uh, this one has this idle control jet uh, that I need, and this is a 74 millimeter, which is what I'm currently rocking. Uh, I also have a, a, a block throttle body now, um, but it's getting stuck, and uh, so I'm just going to install this real quick, and hopefully this improves the drivability on my car, uh, because at the moment it's a pain in the butt to drive because the throttle body gets stuck. So I'm going to go ahead and start the car to show you guys the throttle issues that I'm having. So this is on a cold start. So, uh, 
screeches. I got to figure out why that is. Um, but my current dilemma is that I'm idling like a two grand almost. But even even apart from that, uh, after the car warms up, the throttle body gets stuck and it just kind of like surges and it's really, really annoying. So I noticed that if I throw the throttle body by hand, So as I'm driving regularly, uh, giving the throttle and whatnot, that's what goes on. Uh, the throttle body gets stuck, so now I'm just going to replace the throttle body completely, and hopefully uh, it fixes that issue. I swear, dude, only in freaking California. These random freaking rainstorms. He's trying to finish up this damn car jeez man well I installed the throttle body which was easy um, but this is a problem so my throttle bracket goes here this is a GSR throttle cable and a GSR throttle bracket this throttle body is only configured for B16 LS B20 whatever um it is not configured for gsr and now i need to run a gsr throttle cable bracket and cable because of because of the rbc intake manifold there is no mounting points for a throttle cable bracket on this manifold so i must run a uh, gsr throttle cable bracket because it mounts to the throttle body the problem with that is ow that uh it's poking the problem with that is that the cable uh does not reach there there's no way for this cable to to pull the throttle pulley uh correctly so i don't know if i can somehow flip this around and make it work still um but i'm kind of kind of screwed on this I reached out to Blocks, and they said that they've never heard of it, this being an issue. Um, but clearly, I'm showing you that it's an issue uh, using the GSR cable and the GSR bracket. Um, so, kind of a bummer because you know I spent money on this throttle body, and it doesn't even function uh, with my application. So, had there been a note or something that it wouldn't work with the GSR uh, throttle cable and bracket. Then I wouldn't have gotten it. I would have, you know, gotten a different style that could accommodate it. Um, but so that that's a downer. So now I need to figure out how I'm going to route my cable or how I'm going to figure this out because I need to have the car running by Friday, and today is Thursday. So I need to figure something out today and try to acquire whatever parts I can acquire in order to uh, get this thing going. So let me let me pick my brain and. And I'll keep you guys updated. Idle sucks because no out of control valve. And then of course my alternator is screeching. This one slightly gets stuck, but at least this one, a little tap, will make the idle come back to normal. Um, so let me show you guys what I did. So I had to swap over the throttle pulley from my other throttle body. Yeah, it looks fine here, um, but you know, mechanically, it's kind of ghetto rigged. Uh, and this is just until I can find a uh, GSR throttle body that I can take the pulley from. Uh, but you see how the spring is kind of all wound up like that uh, obviously not the best but uh, but it's going it's working um, I do have a uh, coolant reservoir that I need to install and figure out how I'm going to make it work um, but I do have one and I need to install that as well and then I need to install my uh, new master cylinder uh, that I got so I need to believe the brakes so I'm gonna be doing that today so uh, I think I got the vlog all ready to be filmed so let's get into it 
So I've got this coolant reservoir off of uh, Amazon. This is like 20 bucks, something cheap. It's just a reservoir, I don't need anything fancy. So, got the car running, uh, got the coolant reservoir installed. Um, this hose is ugly, so I am gonna get a black hose, uh, but it's just what came with it. And so like I said, the uh, throttle body pulley, uh, I had to kind of get a rig it in order to get it to work. But uh, huge shout out to Brian. Uh, he had a GSR throttle body and he sold me just the pulley. Um, it wasn't a quite direct fit. Um, this portion here was slightly bigger than the GSR one. So I drilled it out in, uh, enough for it to slide through. And uh, yeah, so the spring fits just fine. And uh, now the, the, the throttle goes back just the way that it needs to go. So kind of sucks uh, that I had to buy a throttle body and go through these issues, especially uh, if the throttle body states that it's for B-Series. Um, so this is my new master cylinder. Uh, this is a 15 16 master cylinder off of a 1991 uh, EF sedan EX model. Um, so as you can tell, it is a lot bigger than my OEM one for the EG. Uh, the reservoir is way bigger and the, uh, the shaft, I guess this portion here, uh, it's way bigger too. Uh, so I'm going to drain the brake fluid and, uh, I'm going to use my Harbor Freight tool that I got and, uh, I'm going to vacuum all the coolant out. Hopefully it works. This is the, uh, the line for my tool and uh here's the tool i squeeze it and it creates uh it, it creates a vacuum here on this hose so i'm hoping i could just do this sink this to the bottom and uh just suck all the fluid up yep just like that Ooh. And I just sucked up all of the fluid in a matter of seconds. Man, so easy to get all this fluid out with this tool. This is way easier than I thought. And all the fluid I just uh, pulled out, it's right here. That fast. So I've got the original reservoir out, or master cylinder out. And man, this tool, dude, this tool is the truth. It was like 30 something dollars at Harbor Freight. And uh, I didn't have to worry about any brake fluid dripping or anything because it sucked it all out. Uh, when I pulled these brake lines off, I put the, uh, the, the vacuum line in there and it sucked it out even more. So no drips, no nothing. So that's awesome. The brakes feel amazing after uh, taking the car for a test drive it's night and day difference if you have these uh willwood uh, dpha calipers i highly recommend you do a 15 16 uh, master cylinder from a 1991 uh, honda civic ex model um, i got my master cylinder brand new from rock auto it was like 80 bucks i'll put the link in the description um but man huge huge difference so uh, i'm pretty stoked after that the pedal feels insane like uh insanely different um but anyways the car is running i'm super happy um this is the end of the vlog here but anyways as always appreciate the support catch you guys on the next one and uh don't forget to like comment subscribe peace